back from the dead. Sorry I haven't really uploaded in a while. I've been busy with life and stuff. You know, school, family. It's been complicated for the past few months. But hey, since I'm back and it's Christmas, I figured it would make sense for me to review one of my favorite PS1 games from one of my favorite franchises, Spyro the Dragon. So, who is Spyro the Dragon? Well, if you're meaning you have no life, you would know he's one of the greatest things ever made. Because I love Spyro doesn't mean I think he's perfect. There are some really bad games in this series. There are some great games like Spyro 3 and 2. And yeah, there's also sh** here too. There's... <laughs> there's also a couple of underrated Spyro games in my opinion. Uh, I feel like the Legend trilogy is hated for no reason. Well, honestly, I guess it makes sense because of the overwhelming story they added with the three games. Aside from that, Spyro's original creation was just out in Asami, I get out of debt because how badly Disruptor did in sales. Anyway, when it comes to talking about Spyro, not a lot of people talk about the first game, but I feel like there's a reason why. It's mostly because of the fact a lot of people just say it's aged poorly and its sequels would do it way better. Honestly, I feel like it's still a great game and it's aged quite well, so I figured I would review it for Christmas. <laughs> oh yeah, forget, uh, I need to take care of something real quick. Hang on. There we go, and let us start the video. In the world of dragons. One day, the elder dragons are being interviewed, and one of them gets asked a question about Nasty Nork. One of them comes out and insults Nasty Nork three times. Nasty Nork is a simple creature. Vampire. He has been contained in a remote world, and is no threat to the dragon kingdom. No threat! Besides, he is ugly. Of course, Nasty hears all this and decides to turn all the dragons into stone. Well, except for you, Spyro, and it's all up to you to save the day. Of course, I think the story is simple, and it doesn't need to be too complicated. If you want a story that's too complicated in the Spyro universe, I think I recommend you some Legend Trilogy. Now, let's talk about the gameplay. So yeah, Spyro 1 is a 3D platformer. Spyro's moveset, in my opinion, is actually really cool, and it's something not a lot of 3D platformers used at the time. You see, Spyro charges and he can flame. You see, Insomniac decided to use these moves in a unique way. Not all enemies can be charged or flame. To better explain this, you can't just charge at a big enemy. You have to flame it, mostly because it can impact your charge. There's also some small enemies where you have to charge at them, mostly because they have shields and they can take your flame. I always liked this idea. It always kept the gameplay from being stale and boring. That's something I wish I could say about more later Spyro games, sadly. Let's move on to the collectibles. There's three collectibles in Spyro 1. Gems, eggs, and elder dragons. Let's talk about the gems first. Gems are usually just laying about, or sometimes they're gonna be in enemies, or maybe they're gonna be hidden. Most of the time, most gems are hidden from you to find. Or, sometimes you need to find a key to unlock a certain chest so you can get most of the gem. And then there's the dragon eggs. They're usually being held by these men in robes. The best way for you to get the egg is for you to charge or flame the guy. But you have to be very quick or else you'll get away. Of course, I saved the best for last. The Elder Dragons. Thank you for releasing me! <laughs> oh no! Okay, I can't blame the game itself, uh, mostly because of the system it's on. Sometimes they just reuse the same exact line from The Last Dragon. I'm not kidding. Check this out. Thank you for releasing me. Thank you for releasing me. It's just the same voice being repeated for a different character. Now, some dragons do say different things, but I don't know why, but this one just ticked me off the most. However though, when it comes to voice acting, there's one small character that has a problem with this. What about Nasty Nork? I'm going after him. Where's Nasty Nork? I'll torch him. Carlos, why you have to do this to me? Yeah, I don't like Carlos' voice of Spyro in this game. And it's a shame though, because he voices one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time. There might be some Carlos uh, Spyro fans out there that might hate me for saying this, but I think Spyro sounds like a bratty little douchebag to me. Well, Carlos Spyro can do one thing, and that's make one of the greatest lines ever made in this game. Bro, you gotta believe! 
It just feels so out of place. It's a reference to Parappa the Rapper, and I love it because of that. Anyway, let's talk about the levels. There's 36 levels and 5 homeworlds. Overall, the game is pretty big. I got a couple of favorite levels in this game. Uh, Treetops is one of my favorites for a reason. I don't know why, but I feel like the mechanic that they added in this stage, you know... You see, there's this, like, little dash panel thing where if you run on it, you, uh, go fast. I don't know why, but I just always found this stage a lot of fun when I played it. My second favorite one has to be Dark Hollow. I don't know why, this one just looks cool, and the lighting in it is actually really unique for the PS1. When it comes to favorite homeworld, oh man, Beast Makers. I always like this one, mostly because it takes place in a swamp. I don't know why, but all the swamp ones in this game are always going to be my favorite. They just look so cool to me. Oh man, how could I forget? There's also some flying levels. Uh, this is a staple to the Sparrow series, and I really like these stages. When I first played them, I never really could get into them, but playing them again... Oh, I love them. They're a lot of fun. Alright, let's talk about the difficulty. Spyro 1 is a easy game. You could beat it around 4 hours. Oh yeah, you also have a health bar in this game. Uh, Spyro 1 does it a unique way. You see, you have another character that's pretty much your health. And you could tell that your health is strong by the way he looks with its color. So your health bar is actually a dragonfly named Sparks. He's a character that would get more information in Spyro 3 and 2. The way you could tell that you're losing your health is the way that Sparks looks with his color. Yellow Sparks shows that he's full health. Green Sparks shows that he's low health. And blue is medium health. It's actually really cool and I'm really glad they made this. Alright, now let's talk about the bosses. They're terrible. Well, that's kind of obvious, because Spyro 1's bosses are infamous for being, well, not bosses. Really, all you have to do is you chase after them, flame them, and do it three times. It's dumb, and I'm glad they would fix it in Spyro 2. Okay, so what do you get if you beat Spyro 1 and complete Spyro 1? Well, you don't really get much for completing it, aside from an ending in another stage. A beating it, you get a okay ending. So yeah, Nasty Norks defeated, Spyro saves the day. And so, Spyro gets interviewed, asking what else is there to do for him. Well, you see, if you collected all the treasure, there would be a door open. And since Spyro says that he still got some more dragons to free and treasure to find. So, leading up to the next stage. The bonus level, Nasty's Loot, is where you go to Nasty's Lair and collect tons of treasure and free one more dragon, and then you get the final ending. The final ending ends off of Spyro being interviewed, telling everyone that he saved a day. With some cocky sunglasses, saying he's fired up. The final part of the ending is where the Elder Dragons get turned into stone. However, though, the sequel would not continue with that, it would do something completely different. And now with Spyro 1, has it aged a bit? Yeah. Is it still fun? Definitely. Should you still play it? Aw, oh, yeah, man. The game has aged a bit, but honestly, it's still worth your time. Well, since I still have these wings, I'm off, and you guys have a happy holiday.